A private investigator followed me into a grocery store when I was leaving the parking lot of the grocery store and I put my car into reverse. I had a backup camera and he was hunched behind the car in like the fetal position. What was he expecting to gain from that? You're going to hit him with the car. I was basically going to run him over and then that would be the thing. I, oh, I ran some old guy over at the at the supermarket. How much are they paying you to literally sacrifice yourself for the cause? That is how they deal with people that expose them or use their platform to expose them. The main objective is to cut off the person and per their own policies, internal policies, to ruin them utterly, lose their job, lose their family. They actually do a study of the person when they first are identified as a target, find out what they hate, find out what they love, destroy what they love, make more of what they hate. Hey, my name is Shalise Ansola, and this is Cults to Consciousness, where we discuss leaving high demand religions or organizations and finding healing and independence through awareness and true individual sovereignty. As always, if you're only listening and you want to see our faces, go to my YouTube channel at Cults to Consciousness, where you can join in on the conversation, like, subscribe, become a supporter, and we really appreciate seeing you in the comments. This is the second episode with today's guest, which if you haven't seen the previous one, don't worry. It's not a requirement. You can definitely be thoroughly entertained by this episode on its own. However, if you do want a little bit more context as to his life growing up in Scientology, becoming a Sea Org member, and his life working at headquarters in Golden Era Productions in Scientology, pause this video, go watch the other one, come right back. So we are about to get into his epic escape out of Scientology. You know who he is. He has his own YouTube channel, Blown for Good. Here we go with Mark Headley. So I packed up all my stuff and um, I went in the garage. Now, this is the craziest thing. My next door neighbor was a guy by the name of Rick Cruzen. And Rick Cruzen um, was very famous for having escaped many times before and being brought back every time. And when you escape in the C organization, it's called a blow. Uh -huh. And someone who's blown or has, has committed a blow is, is referred to as blown. And almost everyone who blows is recovered. They get them back. They hunt them like animals and they find them. They track them down no matter where they are in the world. There's a gal that was in South Africa That's and crazy. she was found and brought back to the property. So my next door neighbor, Rick, had blown many times and he was in a little bit of trouble with David Miscavige. He wasn't getting some stuff to him that he wanted. And so when you're in that kind of zone, they, they watch you. Cause they're like, this is the bees of the, the people who work with Dave are the people that escape the most because he's putting so much pressure on them that they pop and they, they try to hightail it out of there. So I get on my motorcycle with a little suitcase with some clothes I put together and I'm starting to dry. I, I, I get on the bike. I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm doing it. It's done. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to escape. And uh, as soon as I pull out onto the road, the security truck from the property is parked oh. there because they're watching Rick Cruzen's house while he sleeps <laughs> so that he doesn't escape. So as soon as I escape, I'm like, oh, oops. There's security. <laughs> That's uh, it. They're, they're literally following me. I'm like literally 10 seconds into escaping it. And they're right there. Like I didn't even make it out of the driveway. Uh, as soon as I got out, I was like, oh, there's security. <laughs> and it was the guy who had just woken me up like 10 yeah. minutes before. <laughs> He's just like, oh, there he is. Okay, good. Oh, there he is. There's security. So they're just following me down the highway. And it's actually, it's raining. It's in the middle of what's that area is like called San Jacinto, California. The base itself is in, is called Gilman Hot Springs. The whole entire city of Gilman Hot Springs is the international headquarters of Scientology. There's nobody. Yeah, it's like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. And if you're looking for it on Google Maps, just look for the Gilman Hot Springs and green because they spend an inordinate amount of money on electricity and water and they keep that place pretty green or they used to, they might not anymore. I don't know. But so I'm driving down the highway 
And we're getting further and further from the property. And the security truck is just sitting there. It's like an SUV, like a Nissan Pathfinder. They're just sitting right behind me. They're not doing anything. And then as soon as the road gets a little bigger, they come up next to me and they're like, pull over, pull over, pull over. I'm like, nope, I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go. And then they just pushed me right off the road (gasps) with the security SUV. Just drove me right off the road. Were you injured from that? No, I was. Well, you know, it's so funny um, because I think the adrenaline was just going so much that I was just like, I wasn't phased at all. I literally just, they just pushed me off the road. And then when I ran out of road is when I crashed. It's just like, oh, I got, I can't, there's no more, there's nowhere to, there's a fence and there's a truck. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm done. But luckily they did that because when they did that, somebody was driving by in the other direction and they called 911. And that person saved my life. That one person that said, you know what? That was really weird. Did that car just run that guy off the road? And um, they called 911. They said, hey, there's a truck that just ran a motorcycle off the road. And now they're fighting in the middle of the street. That's what the person said. What had happened was when they ran me off the road, the guy got out, the security guard, his name is Danny Dunnigan. Um, And he used to screw up all the time. And they used to call him Danny Dunnit again. Oh. Because he would mess up so much. He got into a fight with a protester and this protester ended up suing Scientology and they had to pay him like several hundred thousand dollars because this security guard punched somebody out at the, uh, at the, at the security booth. Anyway, um, Danny done it again or Danny done again as his, his given name. He ran over to the bike and he took out the key as soon as we crashed. So I couldn't even get on the bike and go again. And I was like, dude, give me the key. And he wouldn't do it. They have a police scanner. And so they heard the call go. Hey, males fighting on the side of the road. Motorcycle was run off the road by SUV, black SUV. As soon as he heard that, he threw the key right to me and he got in the truck and he drove off. Whoa. Because they were telling him, you got to get out of there. The cops are coming. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> um, I just got, took the key, went back to the bike and it was all messed up. My clutch was broken oh. because I, when we, when I crashed, the, cl- the clutch snapped off because it's the, you know, it's on the handlebars. So I'm trying to like bump start it and it won't start. And finally I get it going and I'm just putting. It would only go five miles an hour after that. Oh my gosh. Because um, I think the carb got flood, the carburetor got flooded or broken or something happened, but the f- clutch was broken and now it wasn't running right because it, it just had an accident. So I'm going five miles an hour down the highway and I see this sheriff coming and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and sheriff does a Yui. Pulls me over. <laughs> I'm like, and he asked me, Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, Oh, I'm just, uh, just going into town. <gasps> because you're too afraid of law enforcement because they've made you afraid of law enforcement. That's right. Not only that I'm afraid of law enforcement, I don't want to make any more trouble for them than yeah. I've already made. Like I'm already a dead man in my eyes because now the police are involved. Yeah. Like this is, this is everything. All of my Scientology training tells me this is very bad. This is going to get much worse very quickly. And so I say, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to go into town. He goes, we, we got a call. There was an altercation back there on the highway. And I was like, Oh, that was just my friends. Um, I'm going to see my dad and we just, they need to ask me some questions, sort some things out before I could go, but we're good now I'm going. And the cop is like, okay, he takes my license. He goes back to the car. He comes back and he's basically like, dude, where are you trying to go? We will help you get there. I'm like, I'm trying to get to the U-Haul in in San Jacinto. He's like, okay, good. Let's go. Let's get you there. And like, I basically, he was like, I know what's going on. Yeah. You're trying to escape. We're here to help you. And as soon as he said, we'll get you where you need to go. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. I need to get to the U-Haul. And he's like, no problem. And he called another car because they were, they were like, we think they're going to come get you. The cops were like, we think they're going to try to come get you. It's not over. And so I was sort of like, okay, whatever. I'm like, I don't think they're going to come try to get me now because now you guys are here. Like that, that I, I'm sort of like, I went from being on Scientology side to being on their side. Yeah. As soon as they let me know that they knew, as soon as they knew what was going on and I didn't have to pretend, I was like, oh yeah, no, they're not going to come. And they tried to come. Two different Scientology cars tried to follow us. And that the car behind had to pull them over each time and tell them, you're impeding an investigation. Do not follow us. Yeah. Many, many years later, I ended up getting the police report from the whole incident from the two different uh, Riverside County Sheriff's uh, officers that had responded that day. 
And th they had the license plate and the names of the two people from the international headquarters from Scientology that tried to, and it was the legal director and the port captain, which is like the public relations director, were the two people driving the two different cars. Wow. And I was sort of like, oh my gosh, they really were, they really wanted to make sure I didn't get out of there. So for somebody who has a hate website that they kicked out, they sure really worked really hard to keep me there when I finally decided to escape. They got me to the U-Haul. We drove five miles an hour the whole way there because my bike was broken. So it was a sheriff in front of me and me and the sheriff behind me and they had their lights going and we were just driving all the way down the street. And, um, and then the one in behind us kept disappearing for a few minutes to go deal with these other the Scientology people. And then he would join back in when he, <gasps> he'd catch right back up. <laughs> and, um, and so then when we got to the U-Haul, I was like, thanks a lot. And they're like, I don't think so. When you're in a <laughs> truck and you're driving away, uh, we're going to let you go, but we're not going to leave. He's like, they just two different people just tried to get you yeah. after they ran you off the road. So we're not leaving you until you're in a truck and you can't just be, gotten back again so then i had to call my dad and i was like hey dad um i kind of just escaped and he was like where what do you need i was like i need a plane ticket i guess i was gonna ride my motorcycle to you in kansas city but uh it it's done dead now so i gotta dump it somewhere and get on a plane and um yeah he bought me a ticket and i literally dumped the bike at some place in la that of a friend he knew that still lived in la and left it at her apartment building and she gave me a ride to LAX and returned the U-Haul and it was just like poof. Yeah, it was really crazy. Wow. That is a crazy escape story. And then when Claire told her story on a, another episode, which guys will link it, so we won't get too much into Claire's story, but I would love to know how you felt, Mark, when you got that phone call from Claire or the, the note that said, call me at 6 a.m. Like yeah. what's going through your mind? I really thought... Um, that it was a trap, 100%. Because mm. uh, she had already called me, and so had my sister. And so has the guy who said, you're going to the RPF. Yeah. Like, that guy was like, no, 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 I screwed up. It's um, Dave said you can come back, and, you know, you're not going to the rehabilitation <gasps> project force. This was all a big misunderstanding. That guy was on the phone with me for hours trying to convince me to come back. And David Miscavige said this and David Miscavige said that and you're going to get everything you need. And you were the good guy in this thing. You sold all that equipment. We were going to throw it away. Like wow. everything to like, no, 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 no. This is like they were like this. No, 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 no. This is all a big misunderstanding, a big misunderstanding. And I was like, nope. I'm not, I'm not misunderstanding anything. Yep. This is, I've slept and I've eaten. Things are brilliantly clear to me now. <laughs> so what did she say when you talked to her? At first she was basically saying, come back and all those things. David Miscavige said, uh, you'll get all the money and you'll get all the equipment you need. And, uh, and your designs are the best designs that anybody's ever done. And you're the first person to ever really take care of this area. And you know, all this stuff. And I'm just like, I'm like, are you kidding me? I know, I know, because I've seen people get hunted down and brought back, and the spouse is usually the one they use to convince the person to come back. So I'm like, nope. And to be fair, I ha I really had been sleeping, and I really had been eating, and I started to come out of the fog. Yeah. And my dad was a com he worked at the time he worked for IBM, and he was a computer technician. And I had done a lot of that in my experience with audiovisual stuff. I was really, I, I bought and sold, you know, millions of dollars worth of computers from Dell. And, you know, we were doing a lot of stuff with computers. So I was like, oh, how much you get paid for fixing computers? He's like $50 an hour. I was like 50 bucks an hour. I was making 46 bucks for 120 hour a week. Wow. I could make that much in one hour. And he was like, yeah. How much you know? And I started showing. He's like, oh, yeah, you could easily make $50 an hour doing computers. So I was sort of like, huh. I literally thinking I'm going to make as much in an hour as I made in a week. And I'm going to make that all week long. This is ridiculous. What? Well, I, and then I was literally like, why did I? What, what, why did I stay there as long as I did doing work? I wasn't there for the Scientology. So what? And I was just like, I just didn't know anything else. I didn't have, yeah. I didn't even know that I could do work in, in the real world. If that's another thing they always tell you. They say, if you don't, if you leave the Sea Org, you're going to, you'll be lucky 
to to end up flipping burgers. Like that's the best case scenario. You'll most likely be homeless and you'll die on the streets. But Jeez. if you're really lucky, you might end up working at Burger King. And it was to the point where I was like, Burger King is looking mighty fine right now. Like <laughs> I would flip burgers all day, every day, if I didn't have to put up with half the nonsense that I have to put up with here. And you would make more money at Burger King than you did in the Oh, I would slay. Yeah, I would be like, <laughs> what? You know, like I'm like, I when I got out, I was sort of like, I'm trying to see the the downside to this whole Burger King equation. Like this seems like a good setup. <laughs> but anyway, so I started making money and I started doing whatever I wanted within days. I was sort of like, okay, I got a I got a this account, I got this and I got a place to stay cuz I'm staying with my dad. He's married and they've, they've got like three four bedroom house. It's just him and his wife. I'm staying in the guest room and I'm sort of like, this is good. I like this. It sucks I don't, I can't um, be with Claire, but Claire's whole family are in Scientology and they get along with her and she likes them and they like her. So I'm kind of like, she's never going to leave her family. That's just not going to happen. She's not going to leave her family to come be with me. So I'm just sort of like, it just is, it just is what it is. So when she and my sister start calling and start, Hey, you know, they're calling my dad, right? Of course, they're calling my dad right away. Before I even get there, they're talking to him. And he's like, no, nope, haven't heard from Mark. Nope. Because this whole time he's been playing nice. Yeah. And we haven't seen him in, you know, 15 years. And he, when he got married, I went to his wedding in Vegas. And I got in trouble for going to his wedding in Vegas from the property. I went during my sleep time there, went to the wedding and came back. And I got in trouble for being oh. there when I should have been sleeping. Wow, that is just so much. I can't believe you got in trouble for going to your own father's wedding. Now, we know that Claire did eventually change her mind and you were able to help her escape. And we won't go into that because we got into that in her episode. So, guys, go watch that next. But now I want to know what happened now that you're both out. And I saw a video on your page about how they started coming after you. And you have the actual internal document because someone else who left Scientology was able to bring that with you. And I just think it's so fascinating. So can you read a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes when you were blown for good and they realized that you were speaking out? Yeah, so when I left, um, one of the things that I started doing was I started going on the internet and looking up stuff about Scientology. And there was a website called Operation Clambake. And it had all of these Scientology documents that you're not allowed to see in Scientology unless you get to the higher levels. Mm. And that's where the, there were documents that are called the Operating Thetan or the OT levels that were on this website. And there was lots of ex-Scientologists commenting on this website. There was a message board. And so when I started reading that message board, uh, most of the stories were old from years and years and years ago. And they didn't have any current um, Scientology stories of what was going on when there was tons of craziness going on inside. But there just weren't any. There was nobody that had, had escaped that was saying it. But you had. <laughs> so I started posting and I and I had to think of a name because everybody has a name that they post as. And so I was trying to think of a name and I thought, I'm going to be blown for good. Like I'm like I'm escaped, but they're never going to get me back because a lot yeah. of the people they recapture and bring back. So that's just what I made up. Just uh, just a spur of the moment. Oh, blown for good. BFG. It'll be a good initials. And so that's what I would post as Scientology has a spy wing that's called the Office of Special Affairs, and they monitor anything on the Internet that talks about Scientology. And so they were. They were reading the posts of this BFG guy. And so the document I'm going to read <laughs> is from May. Now, we left in January of 2005, and this is from May 2006. Okay. Okay, so it's now a year after we've been gone. And I've been posting for months, maybe, on this um, on this platform. And now they're watching, and they're trying to figure out who it is based on the postings. They're searching all of their internal files against the post to see punctuation errors and spelling mistakes to compare it to their own members what? to see. Yes, this is from May of 2006. 
and it says eyes only confidential attorney client privileged may 1st 2006 mark headley slash bfg a means of substantiating our conclusion on mh as bfg is needed so that this can be used in the confrontation and not simply denied and blown off by mh this was going on, gone over in detail and the following is the plan and it says analysis of existing data in going over all of the data and clues we have about the identity of bfg it is totally clear that it is headley now this has been going on for months like i think these documents start in about february or january uh-huh and in this document um they've sort of concluded that it is me but up until this point mike rinder who has also left scientology he was um copied on a lot of these documents going back mm. and forth so he actually has read and seen almost all these documents and he was telling david miscavige from the very day one that blown for good is mark headley and david miscavige um actually berated him and told him that's impossible he wouldn't know it, a lot of those things that that guy's posting and so mike render was like it's mark i know it's mark he knew me mike knew me and he knew that it was me but dave miscavige would not listen to mike and mike actually got and sort of got in trouble for even suggesting that it was me wow i bet it's so much fun now to talk with him and compare it's hilarious notes. because in the documents you can see that he knows it's me, but he can't say that because he's already said that and Dave wouldn't take that as an answer. Oh so my now gosh. these documents that they're writing, now Osa and Osa doesn't know. Osa is in Los Angeles and David Miscavige was in the desert in California. And the things that David Miscavige tells Mike's, those don't get filtered down to Osa all the time, especially if he's saying it's not Mark Headley. So Osa, meanwhile, they've been working investigating this thing for months and they had like four or five different suspects and they finally decided on me. And in this document, they're sort of saying, we know that it's Mark Headley. We're positive. And so this is they're trying to sell it in the document. It's got to be this guy. And now Mike has to pass that report on to David Miscavige that it's Mark Headley. They, they Osa's pretty much figured it out. It's Mark Headley. Right. At the same time, there was a video. There was two different videos that were leaked to the internet. One of these is the video of Tom Cruise in a black turtleneck uh -huh. um, at this event. And he's saying all these crazy internal Scientology things. So that video had just been leaked onto the internet. Then there was also a birthday party that Tom Cruise was thrown by Scientology. It cost about a million dollars for them to throw this birthday party for Tom Cruise. I mean, they spent 350 to 500,000 just on cameras and rental equipment to film Jeez. it. So the other expenses, they, they airlifted at a whole sushi restaurant from Santa Monica to the free, oh to the God. cruise ship and the, in the, um, Aruba or Curacao, Bonaire, wherever it was at the time. I mean, insane stuff is going on for this birthday party. And there was a video of that that had been leaked onto the internet. I just learned about this from Mitch Brisker on our, on our episode together. Yeah, so they suspected that I was the one who had leaked those videos onto the oh. internet. And so now they know that I talked to the people that were trying to get the video from me. And Osa also talked to that same uh, media outlet and, um, and they said that they would let them air it, but they had to give up the source. They would let this news or organization air the video, but they had to say who gave it to them. And uh -huh. I said, nope, I'm not going to give it to you. If that's one of the conditions, I'm not giving it to you. Wait, so and it was so you? Then, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we haven't got to that part yet. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so either way. That's what's happening. That's the backdrop for this document. Okay. Okay. So analysis of existing data in going over all of the data and clues we have about the identity of BFG. It is totally clear that it is Headley. Additionally, in his last posting, BFG included data about the DVD that he shopped to inside edition, which ties him directly to that situation as well. This is a rundown of what we know. And then it just goes, it basically has the different people from the Office of Special Affairs 
meeting with all of my friends that are talking to me currently. And this is May. My birthday is in May. And I'm about to have a birthday party at my house. And all of these people are invited to the, to the party. And these people in these coming up documents, after this document, there's about 10 more documents that take place all the way up to my birthday. They're meeting with these people. So like when I'm in the backyard barbecuing and doing the party, they're going to go through my office and rifle through my papers. And yes. No, these are people who you think are your friends my attending friends, your birthday party. My friends, my best friends that I've known since I was a child who also were at the international headquarters had also escaped. And but they have family members that are still in Scientology that they want to oh. talk to. So they wow. use those people as pawns in this overall scheme. And they, they say, Hey, if you want to talk to your mom, you got to spy for us. And Mark Headley is posting really bad things about Scientology on the internet. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to go in and figure this out. out. So these documents are pages and pages. And, and there's a whole series on the blown for good channel called the spy files. I yeah. think we're up to, I want to say we're up to like 15 or 16 or something like that, but there's another. I want to say 10 more documents that have just to do with me, but there are 40,000 pages of the documents that I now have. Wow. I really do think this will be the end of Scientology when these, when every single one of these documents has made its way out in the media. And I'm working with a ton of different people right now to get these out to as many people as possible. And a lot of the people, Jenna Miscavige, who wrote a book about Scientology, there's, she had a whole folder. There's so many other Jeff Hawkins, a lot of people who know familiar people who've written books about Scientology, who've escaped. Almost all of those people have had files and I sent them their entire folder. They're like their dossier of sorts. I sent them the whole thing saying, Hey, just so you know, this is what they were doing back when we were going, having parties and going out to eat. They were there. They were watching. They had pictures of us at restaurants eating. That is so creepy. It makes me want to be like, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> I know. And that's the thing where it's it's really important that people understand this is that Scientology tells their members that there's millions and millions of Scientologists out there. Uh huh. It's just not the case. By current estimates, it'd be a miracle if they had more than 25,000 active members. Really? Really. A lot of those people are independently wealthy millionaires, billionaires, and they give a lot of money to Scientology but they don't have that many people. And if you think about it through that lens, if you're getting, if you've got a guy who's posting stuff on the internet, who's making maybe a few hundred leave, that's a huge deal. That's why they're so obsessed with you. If we have a million, who cares if he leaves 200? Like, it's like, it would be like on YouTube. If you, if you had one person who made a bad comment and you hired a private investigator to find out everything about this guy who made a bad comment. Okay, if you have a million subscribers, one guy making a bad comment doesn't make a big deal. Yeah. If you have a thousand subscribers and there's a guy that's make, stirring up nonsense on your channel, that's going to mean a lot to you. And that's really where Scientology's at. They have a couple 10, 20,000, maybe at most 30,000. If, if you include the Sea Org members and the employees, if you include everybody, maybe they get up to 30,000. But if you have somebody who's scaring away hundreds or letting them know what's going on behind the scenes, then that's a real, real big issue. And it makes sense. The reaction makes sense if you look at it in, in those terms. Right. And also they do have arguably between real estate and holdings, they probably have about $3 billion Scientology. Mm -hmm. So when people say like, well, why would they do this? And why would they spend so much money on lawyers? And why would they do that? If you had $3 billion and you were, it was being threatened, how much of the 3 billion would you spend to keep some of it? Yeah. You'd probably spend two to keep one. You'd maybe even spend two and a half to keep half. I mean, so that's really what Scientology has got right now is they've got a lot of money. They've got a lot of lawyers. They've got a lot of private investigators, but right now on YouTube, they're having a big problem with social media and the internet in general. Right now, YouTube just seems to be a hot spot somehow. And they don't know this. And I've said it many times in videos. And I don't know if anybody will actually tell David Miscavige this. Scientology spends so many millions of dollars on Google ads and trying to game the algorithm on YouTube and on Google and on the internet in general. 
that if you do a video on Scientology, the algorithm's going to push it to the top of the heap because there's a lot of money being spent on that on serving up content to mm. people that are interested in Scientology. So if you do a video on Scientology, it's likely going to get more views than any other <laughs> video you do. The because irony. Scientology is paying Google to push Scientology. Oh my gosh. And they're spending more than ever right now. When Tom Cruise has a movie out, you bet they want to make Scientology the best thing ever and pump, 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 pump. And I, people tell me all the time, I'm watching Scientology ads on your videos. And I'm like, yeah, I know that's the irony. I wouldn't necessarily even entertain doing YouTube as a thing. But Scientology is paying me very, very good money to do it. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, I, and they owe me. I work, I worked for 46 bucks a week. Arguably the lowest amount we worked in a week was about 110 to 120 hours. That was just a normal week. And some weeks we did yeah. a multiple all nighters and we made 46, so 46 bucks a week. So I'm like, finally, they're paying me at least. But I mean, in a weird roundabout way and, and YouTube's getting a 30 percent cut. But um, but still, it's all work. I'm like, OK, if, if you want to pay me to tell my story, I'll do it. Yeah. So how or I guess the, the biggest question I have is, are they still continuing to fair game you and go after you and harass you and Claire? Yeah, about I want to say it's probably been a month or so now. They sent letters to, they sent actually written letters to all of my business clients. And one of the spies, actually one of those guys that I was talking about that it was at my birthday party a year before in 2005, we were actually at my birthday party on Hollywood Boulevard. And it was at a, we knew the guy that was the head of a fashion brand. It was at the time it was, um, it's called Ed Hardy. Mm -hmm. And we actually knew the guy who started the brand and he invited us to this party on Hollywood Boulevard. And it was right. The party took place right next to Scientology's uh, management building on Hollywood Boulevard. So they're at Hollywood and Ivar and the party was at Hollywood and Vine. So uh -huh. on the actual same block, just on the other side of the block. And, um, and I passed out on Hollywood Boulevard, just gone on the boulevard, like there's a star, a Hollywood star underneath me in the picture that my friend took and gave to Scientology. And they put that photo in the letter to all of my business clients. Oh, this guy no. that you that's working for you was passed out on Hollywood Boulevard in his own throw up and da, 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 da And he's a religious bigot and all this other stuff. And the way I found out about it was from my clients. Like they started writing me and like, dude, Where's that guy when he comes to do work over here? Like, I want to go have drinks with that dude. That dude, <laughs> that dude looks like a lot of fun. That dude was, yeah. that dude had way too many drinks that night. <laughs> but they yeah. did literally send it to all of my business clients, this letter to try to, try to sort of ruin my, my livelihood. And you'll see in the docket, if you, if, if you, if anyone's interested and they want to watch, um, the spy files on the blown for good channel. You'll see in the documents, the main objective is to cut off the person and per their own policies, internal policies to ruin them utterly. So lose their job, lose their family, lose anything that they, they actually do a study of the person when they first, um, are identified as a target. One of the first steps they do is find out what they hate, find out what they love. Destroy what they love, make more of what they hate. In a, a nutshell, that is Scientology's um, policy to deal with anyone, yourself included. That is how they deal with people that expose them or use their platform to expose them. They try to find out what they love and they try to find out what they hate. And then they go, they go to town. And we have had, we have this sort of loose connection of channels on YouTube called SPTV. Yeah. And it started out, there was like maybe a handful. There was maybe like three or four channels. I think it's up to 40 or 50 channels now of people that used to be in that have started a channel. And they're like, Hey, I'm this person. I'm going to tell my story. And yeah. they just start doing videos with other people that has similar stories in Scientology and some that don't even have anything to do with Scientology. Like they might have been in another cult or they might have been in another group and they just think, Hey, I want to join in and have some fun. This is, this is a great community and I love it. And everyone is so supportive. And, the Scientology has started going after these people. Really? See, I'm worried they're going to start coming after us. <laughs> so we have a saying 
in the SPTV community, if you don't have a hate site, you're not doing it right. Oh, we're not doing it right yet. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a site, <laughs> if you do end up getting a site, then then you're a rock star, basically. I mean, if you're a All suppressive right. person, we actually even sell, we sell these little bracelets that say SP on them. And uh -huh. um, because in Scientology, they have a clear bracelet. When you achieve the state of clear and when you achieve different um, operating fate levels, you can buy a bracelet. So we just have an easy bracelet. You just have to buy it. You don't even have to do anything. <laughs> just, it's like 30 bucks and you can be an SP, no problem. But um yeah, it's a crazy world. So yes, it um, fair game is what they call it in Scientology. If you're a suppressive person, you're labeled fair game. You can be attacked, you can be lied to, you can be destroyed. Whatever you do to a suppressive, there's no penalties for it in Scientology. You cannot be punished for doing something to a suppressive person. Yikes. So that is 100% alive and well in today's Scientology. And OSA, to be honest, the Office of Special Affairs, Scientology sort of spy wing, they used to be called the Guardian's Office. And the Guardian's Office perpetrated the largest infiltration into the United States government in its history. And if you just look up Operation Snow White anywhere on the, on, on, uh, the internet, 11 top Scientology officials went to prison for infiltrating the United States government. And there has been no other infiltration op operation by any foreign government by any um, other groups since Scientology was caught and convicted. There has never been another more widespread infiltration of the United States government in its history, besides this one instance of Scientology. There's some crazy stuff going on and it's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, I have two questions before we go. Sure. The first, were you the one who released those videos and the second, what is the craziest, most outlandish thing that they tried to do to stop you from speaking out? Okay, first of all, I did release one of the videos and I'm not going to tell you which one. You have to, okay. you have to, I guess you'll have to do some homework to figure out which one I did leak. <laughs> okay. But yes, I did leak one of them. And I do know the guy that leaked the other one. And his name is actually Mark too, which may have created some confusion at the time. Okay. Okay, so that's that. What's the craziest thing they did? Okay, I will tell you, there's so many crazy things I can't remember every single one right this exact second. But a private investigator um, followed me into a grocery store and I could see that he was following me. He wasn't buying, he didn't even have a cart and he was in the store. That's first of all, if you're gonna be a private investigator, at least grab an empty cart and start uh -huh. putting random stuff in it. Don't just walk around and follow me in the store. But then when I sort of, I thought, Dude, I know who you, I've seen you before. I know you. And then he kind of disappeared. When I left, when I was leaving the parking lot of the grocery store and I put my car into reverse, I had a backup camera and he was hunched behind the car in like the fetal position right behind my car. What well, was he expecting to gain from that? You're going to hit him with the car. I was basically going to run him over. And then that would be the thing. I, oh, I ran some old guy over at the, at the supermarket. Whoa. But I had a backup cam. So as soon as I put it into reverse, I could see, the, oh my God, there's a, what's there dude laying behind my car? So I literally just put it right back into park and I go back. I'm like, dude, are you serious? You're going to get hurt. I mean, how much are they paying you? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. How much are they paying you to literally sacrifice yourself for the yeah, cause? Like, that's not a good, that's not good. I don't want to run you over, but I mean, and also that's the other thing. Private investigators are just spending their money. I mean, you might need a, a very loose moral compass to be a private investigator and work for Scientology. But at the same time, there's two private investigators. They paid in upwards, I think it was 25 million to watch one guy. What? They watched this guy for 25 years and they were making about a million bucks a year. These two PIs between them, that was their whole life. They lived where the person they were trying to spy on lived. They moved wow. to be his neighbor. And one of the private investigators' father made friends with the target so he could give him um, a cordless phone. And they had um, transmitters in his phone so they could record all of his phone conversations. Jeez. But these guys didn't get paid one year. And they started talking. They went to the St. Pete Times and said, hey, we've been being paid by Scientology to watch this guy for the last 25 years and da, da 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 and then they stopped paying us so we're telling our story and then you know they got paid real quick and then they that was the end of that oh my gosh so yeah there's not i mean 
it's when somebody says, what's the craziest thing? There's too much crazy to just pick out one little crazy. It's just, yeah, it's a world Unlimited. of crazy. What's that thing you do at the end? You have Linda, uh, is it Linda Listen? Linda Listen. Linda Give me listen. your Linda Listen, Mark. <laughs> My Linda Listen is if you're a sign, Linda Listen, if you're a Scientologist <laughs> and you're watching this, you need to do some homework. You need to get on the YouTubers and uh, look at some videos because Scientology is not telling you a ton of stuff. And um, yeah, so that's what I would, uh, that's what I'd tell all the Lindas out there. Yeah, that's a great Linda listen. And I would, I think that goes for anyone who's in a high demand group. If you're realizing right now that you may be in a cult or a high demand or a coercive control group, do your research because there is a lot they're probably not telling you. Yeah. And one, I don't know who said it, but somebody said, how do you know if you're in a cult or you're just in another kind of group? If you're in a, a high control cult, you'll know when you say you're thinking about leaving. That's usually when you find out if it's a high control cult. If they're like, awesome, they see ya, then you're good. Then fine. Go do something else. But if they start losing their minds and freaking out and wonder who you've been talking to, eh, you might be in a in a high control cult or you might be in a high control relationship or yeah. uh, you might be in a situation that you're not in total control of uh, after all. So. That's my, uh, that's, I, I really think that's a, a really good kind of marker for it. Because if you're mm -hmm. in a group and they don't care if you come or go, then whatever. But if you go to leave and they start losing their mind and they start getting really crazy and progress, um, you know, like possessive and stuff like that, then it might be like, oh, this there might be something more happening here than I, I was really thinking about. Yeah. And you can even figure that out before you leave. If you notice how they treat others who leave exactly. before you even get out of there, exactly. if they demonize the people who leave, if all of a sudden the people who leave are led by Satan or you can't trust them or they're just a bunch of liars, then, you know, that's what they're going to say about you when you leave. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you Mark. so much we for having are me. Definitely gonna, we're definitely going to have you back. We have to have an episode where you tell us all about Tom Cruise. I'm sure people are dying to hear about that. I'm dying to hear about that. <laughs> it's yes. so interesting. I've, you know, it's funny because I when I first was starting to tell my story and my book came out, the only people, pe only thing people want to talk to us about was Tom Cruise. And that kind of turned <laughs> me off of of going on YouTube and doing videos and stuff oh, like that no. because people were like, yeah, 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 fine. You had to escape and they ran you off the, what about Tom? Tell us about Tom. And I'm like, they ran me off the road on a motorcycle. Like that was hardcore. Yeah. Like, yeah, but what was Tom like? And I'm like, <laughs> and, and so now I'm sort of like, I get it. You gotta, you gotta sprinkle a little Tom in here every once in a while. It, it is a thing. And People love to hear about it. And I don't have the most flattering Tom Cruise stories. So I'm happy to share them whenever people ask me. Oh, my God. So, um, yes, we will definitely come back. Well, I'm going to give myself credit. I'm going to give myself credit that I wanted to hear your story first before I hear That's true. heard about Tom. Very good. Very <laughs> good. But I will I will gladly tell you all kinds. I'll d tell you I'll dish on. I actually have a lot of, of other current Tom Cruise info because I know people in the industry from being in the industry for a while. Right. I know. And, and some of the people that I worked with at Golden Era actually escaped and just went back to work in the industry. Nice. And some of those people have shot movies with Tom Cruise. And so when I hear their great. stories and I'll tell you some of those, <laughs> but it's um, it's always fun. It's always fun and entertaining. Yeah. Well, it was really great to hear your story, though. Honestly, really, truly, honestly, you're a great storyteller. It was so much fun. I don't think I've laughed like this in a long time, which was nice because, you know, sometimes it's pretty heavy and I don't get a laugh. So I appreciate this I, I agree. This and that is that is sort of my method of madness is you got to make it a little bit funny because it's it's otherwise we would all just be crying full time while talking about this. Yeah. And that's sort of, yeah. uh, to me, I feel that's not the most productive. I mean, you, everybody needs to cry every once in a while. That's perfectly fine to feel those emotions, but it doesn't really sure. make for a subject that you can stick with. If every time you're going to cry when you hear about the stories. Yeah. So I try to make it a little fun and uh, it makes the medicine go down a little easier. So I appreciate you uh, letting me um, yeah. talk to your, um, subscribers and um and yeah thanks for having me 
Of course. And guys, everyone go check out uh, Mark and Claire's channel at Blown for Good on YouTube. And you can check out their Instagram at Blown for Good and their website, blownforgood.com, where you can get all that awesome merch. Isn't there another merch website? Is it SP? It's called the SP Shop. We have a foundation. Claire is a member. I'm a member. It's called the Aftermath Foundation. Yes. And it helps people that are leaving Scientology or have left Scientology need some help. Kind of a lot of these people that are in the C organization have been there like myself since they were kids. They didn't go to school. They don't know how to drive. They don't have a car. They don't have they don't have any real world experience. And the Aftermath Foundation helps them sort of get their feet back on the ground when they when they get out of Scientology. And we sort of give them give them the tips and tricks that we wish somebody would have told us when we left. And we yeah. had to kind of find out by trial and error and we're like, Hey, yeah, don't do this. Don't do that. Do this, do that. You know, that kind of thing. So spshop.com is where um, we have bobbleheads and we have the SP bracelets and stuff like that. And Claire was mentioning that if you want to become a volunteer, you can email, I believe it was volunteer at the aftermath foundation. You can just go to the website. There's a, there's a volunteer tab. You can just sign up there. Perfect. And I'll put everything in the description so it's not that much work. But thank you again, Mark. It was so great. Do you have any other final thoughts before we go? No, I think we covered a, we t covered a ton of good stuff and I can't wait to do another video. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for making it this far. Let us know if you made it till the end. And if you want to support the podcast, liking, sharing, commenting some words of encouragement and some, yeah, go marks would be amazing. Helps the algorithm and makes us all feel good. If you want to support even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash cult to consciousness. And my newest patrons are Mandy, Laura, Myra, and Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining. We are starting to do our our, our exclusive patron only live Q and A's. So jump on over there if you want to be a part of that. And if you like this episode, I'll put some here that you want to check out. And until next time, follow your highest excitement, be conscious and be well. <laughs>